Today I'm going to show you how to build a loop antenna which will boost the signal to any AM radio. And this could be anything from a Walkman, clock radio, or anything else in between. I'm going to take you through the step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to build this antenna and it can be made completely out of found parts. And the antenna use, utilizes an adjustable capacitor which is made out of, of these envelopes and it's a fairly sharp tuning. This station is about 30 miles away. Before I get into the step-by-step -step instructions, I'd like to take a brief look at the schematic diagram. Here you can see we have got a 12-turn loop wound on a wooden frame with taps and a variable capacitor, which is made from a couple of envelopes. And this capacitor, in conjunction with the taps, will put this circuit into resonance in the AM broadcast band. Now, most of the uh, components you need for to build this antenna, you have in your in the home or in the junk in the junk pile, with the exception of the the wire glue. The wire glue is used to build the capacitor to glue the aluminum plates in the capacitor to the wires and I'll get into that in detail in a moment. The frame is 26 and a half by 32 inches square and it's important to keep to these dimensions in order that the, the loop will uh, attain resonance in the broadcast band. You can make this uh, frame from any scrap wood you might have around the shop. And likewise the base just needs to be large enough and strong enough to hold the loop upright. When you're doing the layout uh, be sure to drill pilot holes uh, so that you don't put any cracks into the wood and you can assemble the loop with conventional wood screws. Now reinforcing uh, mending plates, uh, I have three of them on the side of the loop which are used for the, the taps and these can be uh, conventional uh, brass mending plates or steel, either way will work just fine. The Loop itself is wound from 12 turns of uh, 20 gauge uh, solid bell wire. You can substitute any uh, wire you wish and you can join pieces of wire together in order to get the uh, 120 feet you'll need to uh, wind the loop. The taps are provided at 8 and 10 turns and the end of the loop, the, the 12th term, has its own uh, terminating tap as well. Now the, uh, the wire glue which is available in a blister pack, so it comes as a jar, uh, is used to uh, uh, seal the uh, connections which uh, for the taps and later on will also be used to uh, construct a capacitor. You can learn about uh, where to buy the wire glue which is available both uh, through the internet and at retail through uh, the www.wireglue.us website and uh, also the uh, complete uh, uh, diagrams and mechanical layout for this project can be found at the www.wireglueprojects.info website. Now when you get the wire glue, uh, it needs to be mixed. And the best way to do that is, is to take the liquid on the top of the jar, pour it off into a little cup, mix the, the wire glue uh, conductive carbon, which will be on, uh, on the bottom of the jar thoroughly, and then re-add the liquid back until you end up with something which has a creamy consistency the adhesive is now ready for use. Now once the, the loop is completed, then you then attach it to the base and now we're ready to uh, build the, the capacitors. The capacitor is made out of four pieces of scrap paperboard, such as a cereal box. Each of the pieces is cut to four by nine inches and they consist of the bottom plate, top plate, and the middle moving plate uh, for this capacitor. Now in order to insulate the uh, pieces of paperboard, which are going to be covered with aluminum foil from each other, three business size envelopes are prepared, each with the uh, corners trimmed off. That's a one by one inch piece cut off each corner. So as I mentioned, the uh, pieces of uh, paperboard are covered with aluminum foil and placed inside the envelopes. Now uh, a wire uh, from the coil and along with a short jumper wire is stapled in place to, to the bottom uh, capacitor plate 
and then stapled to the top capacitor plate, you can see the jumper here in the photo, with wire glue applied to give you a good bond between the copper wire and the aluminum uh, capacitor plate. Next, a conventional clip lead is chopped off and trimmed, and it is then stapled to the, uh, to the moving capacitor plate and also covered with wire glue. This completes the construction of the capacitor. The last step to complete your project is to take the two stationary plates, which are shown on the left side of the uh, picture, and tack them down to the, the baseboard. This will allow the sliding plate shown on the right side to move back and forth between the two uh, stationary uh, plates of your capacitor. One final addition for your project, which you might want to consider, is to place underneath the base uh, stick-on felt uh, coasters, which are available at the hardware store, and this will allow you to easily uh, rotate your antenna while you're searching for stations without scratching the tabletop. Now let's take a look at this project in action. In order to use the antenna, first thing you want to do is figure out what's the correct orientation between the antenna and the radio itself. Most radios are good in this direction, but you'll be able to tell that when you turn the radio off axis, it's coupling very poorly into the loop antenna. So the first thing you want to do is figure out with the best coupling between the, the, the loop antenna and the antenna inside the radio. Second, you want to point the, the loop antenna in the direction of the station that you want to receive. Right now, this loop is pointing north, which is where our, uh, in a north-south direction, and our station we have here is located to our north. And last, you want to tune in the station using the adjustable capacitor. There are three different taps, and you need to pick the best tap for uh, your particular station. The more turns which are in the loop, the lower the frequency response of the antenna. So you want to use the most turns for the lowest frequency and then work your way up from there. To properly set the capacitor, adjust the uh, tuning dial to the area in which you want to hunt for a station, and then adjust the capacitor for the maximum noise. When the hiss levels are at the, at the, at the peak, that means this antenna is ready to do some long distance reception. I hope you have a lot of fun building and using your antenna. And let me leave you with the web reference, which will give you further details on this project. And also, you can take a look at the other video projects we have for wire glue.